Okay, so now we'll move on to the next presentation, um, which is the facilities planning update. There has been a ton of work happening in, in this regard, and I'd just like to walk our community through a little more history than we've provided previously. So this presentation will be posted to our website. We'll even cut it out and place it as a standalone on our website so that the community has access. We'll be starting a web page for our facilities, facilities planning and we'll make sure that that's publicized and that's out there because we want to engage the community. We want to keep the community up to speed on what's happening. We want to hear their input, which we had the opportunity to do so far once already, and I'll share those results with you momentarily. But you can look out for a website that will be established as well. So the first steps in this process go back to this idea of combining the programmatic needs and the student needs. And, and what I'll tell you in the last six years, our programmatic needs have, have expanded. Not just from an offering standpoint, but from the facility standpoint as well. Every time you bring a program in, you need a space to house it. So we have been fortunate enough to bring in an engineering sequence. There are very few high schools that have an engineering sequence. Yes, many will offer an elective in engineering, and it's fun, and it's a one-year thing that you do, and it's over with. We offer three different and unique engineering courses in our district. A student can almost minor in engineering before leaving here. A robotics program we offer, a great science research program. We're offering an aeronautics program this spring which is so exciting. Our aeronautics team qualified for the world championship in their first year. Congratulations to them, but now what? We can't just leave it as a club. We need to take the next step as a school district, and the next step is a course, because there's a passion for aeronautics. It's the way of the world. We're preparing our students for jobs that we don't may not exist yet, and what are we doing as a school district to ensure that we're doing our part? So we have the programmatic needs, but that results in space needs. And students have needs. We're seeing uh, smaller classes being created. And, and you take a classroom that's designed for a full-size classroom, and, and you create an 812 program or a 1211 program, and that classroom now is built for a capacity of 25 or 30 students, but you're housing at most 8 or 12 students in the class. So student needs will also have an impact on the capacity of our schools. So when we take the capacity of our schools, which are derived from those two factors above the red arrows, and we talk about the projected enrollment increases. This results in a really earnest conversation about the need to expand our capacity. So we're seeing projected enrollment increases. I'll get to that in a moment. But when we take all of these factors under consideration, we see the writing on the wall. We need more space. And so what have we done so far? Well, in 2018, 2019, we formed an educational review team in the district, and that consisted of uh, all of our district and building administrators. And we looked at the feasibility of the various options that were ahead of us. We saw this coming down at some point. We knew that there were construction projects that were in the pipeline. We'll talk more about that in a bit. We wanted educationally, because that's what this district does. We look at things educationally and what's best for children. We wanted to look at it from an educational lens and put forth gee, this is feasible, this is not feasible. And there were three options that we really discussed with, with great seriousness and purpose. Reopening French Hill, which we saw in the survey mentioned many times from our community. Moving fifth grade to the middle school, and then smaller expansions to each of our K-5 schools. So in terms of reopening French Hill, what we found was that the, and we had this work done with our construction managers, we found that the infra infrastructure costs to bring French Hill up to the condition of a current operating school was almost identical to new construction on our existing elementary school buildings. Now, some may say, well, you're, you're putting a pre-K program there, so you brought it up to speed. Not exactly. So the parking lots have not been amended because we don't have school buses coming through. The cafeteria and the servery have not been amended because we don't have a food service program. The technology and Wi-Fi and all of that infrastructure and, and wiring, cabling that needs to be done was not changed at all because we don't have technology in our pre-K classrooms. So yes, you can start, and also from a security perspective, we have security vestibules and the wiring for all the security infrastructure. It's not at the same level 
that we have in our ex current operating schools. So I just wanted to clarify that point for our community that yes, we are reopening for a pre-K program. However, the needs of a pre-K program are far different than the needs and the reality of a K-12 program. For the points that I just mentioned, and I just rattled off a few, there are a lot more considerations that we can go point by point. The other part for French Hill are the annual recurring costs. So with re with re uh, purposing, reopening French Hill, looking at infrastructure costs and new construction to add on to our additional, our, our buildings, our existing buildings being almost identical to each other. We look at the recurring costs. So Yvette, I'm going to ask you to click on the French Hill costs on, on the bottom of the screen, please. And this will all be made publicly available. This will all go to our website. We did a quick analysis of what the annual recurring costs would be should we open French Hill. And, and I'm going to spend some time on this because the reality is the biggest piece of feedback we received from our community is, have you considered opening French Hill? And this is a really important conversation to have, and, and, and I trust that our community will access this sheet. There are multiple tabs on the bottom for anyone accessing because there are three different points of consideration that we have to have. So Yvette, if you could just stay on that first one, please. Thank you. And you can scroll to the bottom. If we open up a new building, you need a principal, an assistant principal, two daytime custodians, two evening cleaners. You need a secretary in the front office, attendance clerk, a nurse, a nurse's assistant, technology staff, bus transportation run, security personnel outside, security personnel inside, and now an SRO. The costs equate to about $3 million annually. So construction costs to renovate French Hill and to add on to a building are almost identical. But the annual recurring expenses to opening French Hill are about $3 million added to our budget. And that would be a pretty significant hit to our taxpayers. Whereas if we were to build onto our existing buildings, we already have a principal. We have an assistant principal. We have a nurse. We may have to hire another cleaner for each of the schools to accommodate the, the new construction. But that's maybe $150,000, $160,000 for those three positions. So it becomes a little bit more feasible to absorb that within the operating budget than to open up a new building and to hire all of the staff that are associated with opening up a new school building. And that is before we put one student in the building and one teacher on staff. So those numbers are very telling. Those will be shared and made available public for our community to review and analyze and, and certainly ask questions on. And then we go to the middle tab, which are capital improvements that are necessary. There are a ton of considerations. And I broke them out into two parts. There are the one-time costs that we'll have to incur, and then there are some additional costs that we're going to have to be mindful of. Air conditioning. Five, all five of our operating schools are fully air conditioned. French Hill is not. So that's another piece that we'd have to consider. So I rattled off a few at the beginning of my presentation. There are so many considerations. It's a full page worth of considerations and investments that we'd have to make. And that really kind of makes that argument to reopen French Hill for uh, an elementary school less appealing because of the impact that it'll have on our, on our tax rate. And then the final column are just other considerations, things that we'd have to figure out as an administration. Where do we house our high school wrestling program? Where does that go? Well, that's important. We have that as a testing location. PPS is actually holding, held meetings there today, right? PPS held meetings at French Hill today. So if we take that building offline, then what does that mean for some of the other considerations? Those are there. The community will review them. Our board has seen them already. But um, I won't spend much more time reading through the slides. But that was just a uh, pretty in-depth analysis of the reality of opening French Hill. And I appreciate the community's input and feedback. We are assembling a FAQ document that we'll share with the public so that uh, most of the questions that came up from the survey are addressed. But I wanted to provide that in this presentation this evening. Okay. So then we looked at moving fifth grade to the middle school. That was also not a very viable option for so many reasons. Anyone who has had a high schooler, or a middle schooler for that matter, come through our campus, you know that there are certain times of this day, of the day, of the school day, where you just can't get on campus. Or the traffic is just so incredibly congested that it makes traversing the campus uh, concerning. And, and I've heard it from parents. And, and there's a reality. We've made some amendments. We've rerouted some of the buses. We've reconfigured how the buses are staged. But the reality of adding a fifth grade, 250 to 300 students, that's before any construction, 
is a circumstance that we just can't accommodate on this campus. We don't have the infrastructure on the parking lot to accommodate that. Uh, we wouldn't be able to put grade levels in their respective wings, so you'll have fifth graders and eighth graders interacting throughout the course of the day in the hallway, and we'd like to keep the grade levels in, in their respective wings. And then recess restrictions. There's such a small footprint for recess in the middle school that the middle school students do stay in for recess. If there's a bad weather day, if it rained the day before and the grounds are still wet, and right now at Crown Pond and in all of the elementary schools, there's enough paved surface that allows the children to go outside even if it poured the day before. So those were some of the considerations. And then there were a few other things, uh, board heights and, and number of bathrooms and things along those lines where if we're going to add another 300 children to this building, the reality would, would create some challenges. And then finally, we looked at smaller expansions to the K-5 schools. We engaged Mamasi architects to develop designs. We looked at just modest additions. What was most encouraging are the low recurring expenses that we would face once the initial construction costs have been met. And it also provides us with something that we really took away from the survey from our community, it provides us the best opportunity to provide a tax neutral proposal to our community. And presenting a tax neutral proposal was something that came away for me loud and clear that our community was interested in. So what have we done? I won't go through all of the steps, but we understand that enrollment is growing. Student needs are increasing, programs are growing, which means opportunities for children are growing. And there are constructions. There's a Soundview property that was just approved. There are, there's the property by that Roma building that looks pretty well along its way. There are some smaller developments that are happening in town. Those will result one way or the other in increased enrollment in our district. It's confirmed by the Western Suffolk BOCES enrollment study that we commissioned. It's confirmed by what we've been told by the developers of these projects. And I anticipate that the numbers being projected are probably a lower estimate than what the reality will be. Yorktown's a great school district. And I do think if people have the opportunity to move into our school district by more housing being available, I do believe that people will take that opportunity. We also commenced a community survey. We wanted to hear what the community had to say. So Yvette, if I can ask you to click on the link to the, oh, I'm gonna go back, hold on, that one. Thank you. So I won't go through this in too much detail all of the information is there. It'll be available for our community to see. We want to be, we've already posted the responses to the surveys um, on our website. We'll post this to our website as well. It gives uh, just a, a graphic representation of the results. And you can just scroll to the bottom so that our community can see what's coming. All of the questions just broken out in a more uh, user-friendly format. And Those are all of the comments, every comment. They have not been edited. Nothing has been eliminated or amended in any way with its full transparency. What was noted in the community survey is what we're putting out to our, to our community to read. So that will be available publicly. I believe it's already available on our website, if I'm not mistaken, the, um, the survey results. But if it's not, it will be. We can go back to the presentation, please. And so now when we take the factors and combine them, our architects, the enrollment projection study, and the community feedback, it gets us to our current plan. And our current plan is to bring forth, in the next month or two, a plan to the community. It won't be finalized at that point, but we'd like to provide an update as to where we are. And there are two guiding principles, small additions on each of the elementary schools, there were some other upgrades that our community spoke to and being a tax neutral referendum. So those are the elements of any proposal that we make moving forward. There are some infrastructure needs that we have that, that people would like addressed, our community would like to see addressed and we certainly understand that. So as we move forward, those are the premises that we'll be following. That's the premise we'll follow. Small additions on each of our schools that will increase capacity being tax neutral and making some other strategic investments will shine through. So that's where we are. It's essentially what I just shared. 
We are looking at another turf field. That's part of the conversation. That was loud and clear in the survey results. Looking at music rooms, looking at security upgrades. But again, we're going to come back. We'll have Mamasi present a more comprehensive update. I wanted to just set the stage and set the table for our community with regard to some of the history that has happened to this point. And then moving forward, we'll see elements of these three bullets represented in any presentation that's made to the board and to our community. And of course, the computer's restarting now. But on the next slide, it says what the next steps are going to be. And the next steps talk about us continuing to hear what the community has to say, take that information in, use it to enhance our design, modify our design. And once we have a design that, that the board is comfortable putting forward, we'll then begin to invite the community in to take a look at some of the ideas, make some refinements as, as needed, and hear their feedback. I, I appreciate the community taking part. We had so many people participating in this survey. Hundreds, hundreds of community members participated in this survey, and that kind of engagement we really appreciate. I know I'm speaking for the board and for our administration. We really appreciate that. I think it was about 500 people or so, 462 if my, if my memory serves me correctly, participate in the survey. And that's just wonderful to have that kind of participation. And that's beyond the people who kind of stop you on the field and say, hey, uh, it would be great if we had this. Or I hear you guys are thinking about a bond. Did you consider this? So the feedback and the engagement to this point is great. And we look forward to continuing that conversation once we have uh, a more solidified plan. So I'm happy to take any questions on either presentation, but I, I can do that from here or from there. Okay. You, okay, you can good. do it from here. There's no reason to be standing up there while the computer updates. Um, so thank you very much. I, I just want to be clear that this facilities planning update, you are intending to give an update at every board meeting so that the community is staying up to date? Absolutely, yes. And when will the website go live? The website can go live tomorrow. Okay. So the community has an opportunity. Okay. Yeah.